And now I want to give the floor to Marie Simikos, who will tell you about reforms in the energy sector in Ukraine and her vision of the problem. Thanks. <clears throat> First of all, Okay, there's a few words. I want to tell you a few words about myself. I'm from Severodonetsk, from Lugansk Oblast, and where I was born, I studied in Kiev, in Kiev Hill Academy. So I studied political science, and I interested, was interested in the ideas of liberty and political and social freedom how people feel free and where people have the right to live in dignity. Unfortunately, when I studied in Kyumahil Academy and when Yaroslav said that Kyumahil Academy just does not fulfill its mission, well, it does. And my professor gave me a Friedrich Hayek book about freedom and uh, the idea that it impressed me that without political and economic freedom, we fought for and Maidan and on Maidans all over the world is a, an economical an economical freedom is base is a base for political freedom, and where the government controls 48 percent of our GDP in Ukraine. If the government con is controlled by bad people, they have a right to they can fire. Uh, uh, professors that are bad for them, and the same happens in media uh, sphere. So this is how I started economy, and then I became to be interested in energy sector because the influence of the energy sector to Ukrainian economy is quite big, and now I want to switch to Russian so that our Russian friends and colleagues from Russia and Belarus understand me better, if you're not against that. <clears throat> the name of my presentation is Free Ukrainian Energy. I'll try to explain what I mean behind that. First, we should recall what Kaha said, because he thought that the reform in the energy sector is one of the basic steps Ukraine has to make in order to, uh, to break free from that dark place. We pay for the heating more than for the health care. And this uh, re presidential residence in uh, Mezhigiria was paid from the government money, so we paid for that. I think it sums up all the tragedy of our economical sector and the situation in the economy. Just a few values. The Ukrainian economy, one of those, one of the energy um, inefficient in the world in order to produce product, $1,000 product. Ukraine uses 0 0.36 uh, points for oil equivalent. In, in Poland, this value, the equivalent value is 0 0.14, so we spend twice more energy. Just imagine how it affects our competitiveness, how we can sell our products abroad if we spend three times more energy. This tragedy is the same tragedy, tragedy of our competitiveness and economical perspective. And we know that one of our um, greatest uh, energy suppliers is the Russia regime. 
that is not interested in our freedom. So it also undermines our economical perspectives and our possibility to be to exist as a free state. It will not be able to protect that we what we've one in mind and if we don't solve this problem well it's not that bad we don't have any time left but we have some reasons to be optimistic and what do you think what percentage of the internal energy consumption ukraine covers uh, by export 80 percent okay 50 percent Thirty percent is right. Not eighty percent. Thirty percent. Because many people don't understand. We really produce lots of energy. Around sixteen percent more than Poland. And only third of our energy is exported. Is imported. If we become 30% less, if we consume 30% less, we can become theoretically independent country. And we will not care what Putin thinks about that. We can give up this gas gas drug. So we have a situation here where in order to protect our political freedom we have to decrease our consumption 30 percent. It seems quite real, realistic. What should we do? So first step is we we decrease our energy spending energy consumption. We buy around 60% of gas abroad. Normally it's Russia. So if we focus on gas saving, we will be able to give up this, this dependence from Russia and from Gazprom. The second step we don't want to be stagnant because energy consumption is connected with the economical activity. When economical activity is rising, when GDP is rising, people uh, are more rich and they spend more energy, which is good. So we hope that Ukrainian economy will We'll get better and we'll spend more energy, but we have to produce more energy in Ukraine. And we have all kinds of perspectives. There are few simple solutions. Let's start with, with step one, how we can decrease our consumption of energy. If you sum it up, if you sum up the situation right now and the problem that we face, it's enough to see this uh, Naftagaz website, which is a public company, 100% public company, and we saw horrible slides from Yaroslav about 55% of French companies are owned by the state. Well, 100% of Ukrainian energy company, company is owned by the state in the prices for, for the natural gas for all cons consumers in Ukraine. The tariffs is regulated by the state for every category of consumers. So we're really living in the USSR in terms of the energy sector. Nothing changed in that. 
So we are told who wants to pay who. And this is the problem. We changed nothing in the energy sector since the Soviet Union. The biggest category of consumers, gas consumers, is the, uh, residents and uh, companies and residents use more energy than in other countries. The problem is that for the residential consumers, gas consumption does not work. The gas market doesn't work following the principles the guy who consumes, the guy who pays. So you consume, you pay. We have subsidized price, gas prices, gas prices are regulated. Therefore, consumers do not pay the real value and cost. It doesn't mean that they don't, don't pay at all, because somebody will have to pay for it anyway. But we pay it in taxes, in other, um, other fees and other uh, charges. We, not, we need to get rid of that. There is one very simple example, one case of reform which actually happened in Ukraine and gave a very positive effect on our gas consumption, which was the reform of meter reading, meter reading reform for individual households for gas consumption. And in the last 10 years, Ukraine was gasified at 65% of municipalities just because the meter readers were installed and people started paying exactly how much they consumed. So this way we managed to actually maintain gas consumption at a stable rate. Just because people started to have meter readers there in their households and only pay for the, for the volume of gas they consumed, the consumption rate hasn't changed. Even these small steps get very good effect, quite fast. And it has to be, needs to give us grounds and optimism to move forward. Can you imagine if every individual will pay exactly how much they consume in terms of real cost? What kind of economy and savings can we attain? Well, here is, of course, a question that we have vulnerable social groups and gas. They will not be able to pay for it, and that's so, etc. The first argument is that still somebody has to pay for this gas. It's just a different form, different chain, but it's also consumption. Sometimes we pay it even more expensive in the form of war and battles in the East. That's argument number one. Argument number two is if we take a look at a more successful best practices in terms of reform, like Lithuania, then we can see that price deregulation for residential gas consumers and especially access for private companies into the market does not lead to increasing prices. And there are already proofs available from the Lithuanian best practices when part of the regional thermal power stations were sold out or given to private people for long-term lease, and part of them was remained in, and possessed by the state, and the, there was no gap in prices for residential consumers. And the investment that government company, or the private companies I'm sorry, made into the infrastructure and energy saving technology were significantly higher than those of the state. So just as the, based on this case, we can actually ensure our utility system and uh, privatization, thermal power generation as well, and the consequences will no be worse compared to what we have right now if we don't do that, compared to if we don't do that. And it's also worth saying that as of today, 30% of our energy and utilities is just wasted. 
только приватизация сможет установить на сегодняшний Every consumer in Ukraine actually subsidizes large companies like Akhmetov's belonging to Akhmetov and Kolomoysky. I don't mind the large businesses and successful business people, but I don't think this is just fair so that we subsidize all these big tycoons, subsidizing, subsidizing natural gas for privately owned companies. The volumes of those subsidies and those preferences are just huge. It's unmeasurable. It can, one cannot describe it. It's not just a simple system where one tariff is set for all companies. But this is a system of incredibly complicated exceptions, resolutions, subsidies, from railway tariffs to some specific uh, limitations for gas permits, licenses. So therefore, we not only put down the initiative and stimuli for enterprises to save energy and actually pay market-based prices for it, but we also, at the same time, open up big, big hedges for corruption. Because the system is so much complicated, so one cannot actually sort it out. You've got to have a friend in the presidential administration somewhere. So one very, another simple step forward is just getting rid of the subsidies, benefits, and other preferences for industrial companies. Therefore, we will allow global competition to do the job in energy saving, because they will have nothing to do but just have to save and be comparative and compatible competitive with the Polish, for instance, industries and cut gas consumption anyway. And as for increased gas production in Ukraine, probably in the whole world in the last 100 years, there had never been a better, better condition for increased energy production in Ukraine. But today's modern extraction technology may, if not all, then support a lot here in Ukraine. And on the geologist map, they're trying to study our energy potential. If we take a look at the U.S. history in the last years, in the last decade, the developing technology from importers, especially oil and gas importers, to the United States is now becoming a net exporter of those resources. And, net, and this is actually, this actually described and lies in the foundation of the new American miracle when the United States is growing much faster than Europe. We can make the same. It is in our hands to produce more energy to even export it if we need. But if we take a look at how our country behaves towards people who are interested in making more production, it seems that officials just want and legislators just want by all means to not allow increased gas production here in Ukraine. Just a couple of simple examples. Let's say the number of licenses for gas production or extraction it is much more large, it's much larger than it is in whatever European EU member states, Ten, dozens of times more than it has to do with the United States. To get a permit for drilling a mine in Ukraine, drilling which takes from two to three to six months, you need a year, 12 months to drill one single mine. That does not include all the different additional fees and permits for additional water usage. 
for bidding procedures and so on. And one important thing that uh, our officials normally actively apply in order to close our market from the European investors in the fact, is in the fact that when there is bidding announced for um, to let access to whatever endeavors in terms of extraction or uh, research, then these bids are announced 15 days prior to the application date. So the company only has two weeks to get all the paperwork ready for the bidding process. And therefore, clearly, it's clearly there, the company should know that well before the bidding will be announced, so they're in much more advantageous position and privileged position compared to others. And I mean, the list of the documents required to be submitted by companies is much, gives a lot of preferences to our Ukrainian companies, like requirements for the stamps, through the print, for the formats. However, on paper, foreign investors seem to have the right to take part in the bidding procedure than actually without the corrupt linkages and without any uh, relationship in the government that is literally impossible. So the production conditions, energy production conditions can be put in line with Venezuela probably, a country which is in a fully socialist nightmare where everything belongs to the state and people just survive severe poverty. Some of the investors actually prefer to work in Venezuela but not working in Ukraine, which is now the case. And this is a very simple example which we have to grasp. We just have to do whatever as if we would like our energy sector to be invested in and somebody would produce more. And there's another idea that I would like to share. Very often they said that energy is too much important to be given to private hands. And this kind of issue has been proven wrong so many different times. So if we consider where this energy production technology has evolved, which is the United States and North America in general, Canada and U.S., there is a very good reason for that and very simple. In U.S. and Canada, there is private property for the, uh, for the fossil deposits in case in your private cottage somewhere outside of the city on your territory they found oil and you have no use of that because automatically this oil belongs to the state. And this of course has a very adverse effect on the energy sector development as a whole. If the, in the United States on your property they found oil, then you're not responsible for it. But you can make money on this. You're interested in preserving the oil and develop it. In case you don't have the right for it, then officials will have the right for it, and officials are not interested in any economic effect in the right development and proper evolution. So this is the issue that the energy sector purely possessed by the state and governed by the state, and all this is only the state that has enough powers to ensure energy security, and this, I think, is absolutely wrong. In order for Ukraine to get to the energy security and balance, we need less state impact. We need to get rid of the state in there, in the economy, we need to get rid of all the barriers, regulatory framework, gas subsidy regulations, just to let the market do the job. And uh, what's most importantly, important, uh, sorry, uh, po in Poland they do, did nothing, nothing like that. They just took the first three steps, privatization, price deregulation, and uh, enabling conditions for gas production. These three simple things uh, would allow Ukraine to actually become an energy independent country and competitive one. And um, 
also reduce our dependency on Russia and we'll just, just get rid of this huge political, geopolitical weapon from Gazprom. So at this, at this point, I would like to wrap up. Any questions, please? There you go. Right, right behind. Just a second, hang on. We're going to supply the microphone for you. And you can ask a question so that everybody could hear it. There you go. Marichka, my name is Timur. I'm also from Kimmel Hill Academy. I will come to you later, but so far, I know a question in Russian. Why didn't you mention energy saving technology and alternative energy developments? Thank you. Thank you. That's a very marvelous, splendid question you asked. The first thing is uh, the best energy saving technology can be defined by only those people who have to do with, let me put it differently, there is no single standing recipe for good energy saving technology. It's case by case thing. All the methods for energy saving and to save energy are different. And very often, we actually are not aware and ignorant to them. So the best way to save energy is to let or to make or give an opportunity for consumers to pay 100% of price he or she consumes. This will stimulate people and make people say whatever they can. However, at the same time, without making them what does a lot of harm for business and their own lifestyle. So this liberal market actually opens great doors of opportunity for energy saving, actually, if as of today, there is no stimulus like this from for companies since they are subsidized by the budget. What's the sense of investing money into energy saving if things are sorted that way? So the investment problem into the sector in the so-called green energy in Europe is that they distort the market. The market does not function properly. Because often wise, in green energy there are big challenges. What's happening in Germany, for instance, at the same time Germany produces around 30% of electricity in a green way in a so-called renewable technology. Partly, and Germany refused from nuclear energy and power generation which sometimes leads to a situation when in Germ Germany has to buy nuclear energy from France, for instance, because sometimes they don't get enough sun and wind. And partly, they have to import and build new gas, new gas generation, I mean, power plants based on gas. This is just a very simple example of that policy. So we're gonna, if we say we're going to switch very rapidly to green energy, that's not the way it's going to work. It does a lot of more harm than, than help. I would be very skeptical about all those government programs to stimulate green or uh, renewable energy progression. Another, one more question. Good afternoon. My name is Sergei. I have such a question. There is thermal energy, there is hydro, there is nuclear, gas, oil, and stuff. But I have a question like this. What can you say about alternative sources? Can they replace the existing capacities and sources available right now? Is, gonna be, is it going to be lucrative for Ukraine? Can we save or it's about more costs? So if you take Ukraine, can we implement those E-cars or whatever it is that are being tested right now in Poland and are not being produced.
issues with the Ukrainian enterprise called Bogdan? Can we replace the existing energy sources? The, I mean, the nuclear and other types of energy. Well, partly yes. Of course, in a certain proportion, it is possible. There is no single recipe that will actually be allow us to replace the available energy sources right now by some alternatives. Just one sim simple example. A big challenge with alternative energy sources is because most of the technology cannot keep generation under control. If we take an, an example of solar energy, that we are much dependent on whether there is sun or there is no sun, at the same time the need for the energy does not depend whether there is sun or not. Or it, it has, the more sun you have, the more energy we want to consume, for instance. And this is problem number one, so we cannot actually manage and leverage this uh, energy generation. And on the other hand, we cannot encourage alternative energy saving, because right now there is no efficient, there is no efficient enough technology for energy conservation. You can store gas, you can store oil, you can generate power when it is most needed. I mean electricity, but one can, can do nothing with solar or wind energy whatsoever. The second point is that uh, the power lines and networks have to be constantly maintained with current load and this generation gaps. Uh, disruptions do not allow to make it efficiently enough, so there is these alternative energy sources of capacity are quite limited. This does not mean that this will be a never, never story that we want to switch to it or shift to that, but this is government and public encouragements, public policies and programs saying let's build, let's do, let's get it. If politicians just say something like that, you better get out of that room and get away from that guy or forget about him, because these artificial problems sounding like, let's make it, let's do it, this will never work if those people are not business people who are saying, I'm ready to invest into that and I have a business plan, it's going to work, I'm sure. We have a whole line, a whole queue and questions. If you just try to predict the energy resources is just a piece of cake. If we get rid of the piece of cake that we buy from Russia and other international companies, maybe this will stimulate our gap or our country to get, to get these issues develop and evolve and to become more energy independent. Can that be done by getting rid of the piece of cake? I think that's a very good analogy that you're mentioning. I think Kaha once said to me he had a different analogy that a Ukrainian pipeline is uh, like heroin for a drug addict. So you get a, you get your dose, you get your joint or whatever it is, and we're sitting on it. We are addicted to that, and that's why we want to deposit our money, the, some family relics, in order to just get some cash to support the habit. So we're actually trying, we're destroying our home and getting rid of the pressure staff for us. So I, stuff. So I think this is a very brilliant example when this radical deregulation in the energy sector will do for a lot of favor and will be the best impetus for the economic development of our country. So this is the point. And these ways, and these steps are very much, very much simple to take. You do not have to be a Nobel Prize winner or a professor to actually realize that and have it implemented. This has to be political will, enough courage, and never promise things that voters want to listen to, but you just do it, get to it, and do it. And this will give a lot of impetus for the country's economic development, like I said. Another question. You were mentioning that we need to privatize energy sector in this country. As far as I know, all the regional distribution companies, I mean power distribution companies, are already privately owned by Kiev and Ergo, belongs to Renat Akhmetov's company, but 
This still encourages a lot of subsidizing and public investment, and it's not actually making any change. And it's not a push for the economic growth. So the question is not about the owners, but regarding how the market is regulated. That's the first point. The second point is that, in my opinion, the question when a consumer has to pay 100% of the cost at the same time when this, these costs were drawn by averages and based on averages. Nobody actually ever calculated the real consumer tariffs in Ukraine. Nobody ever calculated single tariff regarding how much Ukraine produces for internal consumption and how much it is consumed by households and small producers. You have the rationale. Uh, the first point is price deregulation. The problem is that the country does not have to regulate the energy prices for no categories of consumers. Privatization without de market deregulation will never work because what you're doing right now is you're giving a part of your property, a part of the ownership in private hands, but you still maintain the structure which is protects these consumers from any kind of competition. So Ahmedov in Kyiv has no competitors whatsoever because this is a well-protected market. It is hard to translate when people do not speak on the microphone, though. However, let's try to predict they're talking about energy. So deregulation has to be going parallel. Let's not discuss. Let's have the last question. We're running out of time. I know we have so many, but we already have people who want to answer it. You can no longer raise your hands. And as a happy winner of the cup of coffee right now, We'll ask his question. We can network in private. But you were saying to give to the private hands. For instance, we have a private monopoly in the gas sector, and these companies sharply increases the prices in the liberal market conditions. There would have been a competitor that would gradually turn the prices back to balance. However, since we're talking about resources, and as we know, they are uh, hardly renewable, and it's, the process is going very long, it's taking a long time. So, what would a situation? How would a situation evolve since we have? Monopolies. Well, this is a problem which is solved very simply if we take a look at how uh, the so-called utility services function. This is a term, a concept from back of the Soviet Union times, and compare it with the European standards applicable today. So if the country actually drops all the regulation, then gas consumers, I mean the households, conditionally saying can switch to a different supplier of gas or electricity. And this is often happening that in, in terms of the last statistics, recent statistics, there are around 15 percent in Europe, 15 percent of private European consumers switch to other energy suppliers over a year time. Whenever this, this, there is an opportunity for people to switch, then competition starts on and the market starts doing the job and these problems go away. So I don't see, I can't see any horrible situation, rapid increase of prices because the market works like that. As soon as the prices go up, there is an opportunity for other suppliers to get to actually uh, enter the market and find alternative supply solutions. And this is, of course, uh, there are a lot of examples like that and a lot of proof that this market works this way, like it, is do like it does in Germany, Norway, and so on. Thank you very much indeed, actually.